All right, so I've been on a mission to try to find the top five most comfortable waterproof sneakers for 2024. Let's go ahead and get into this video. So I've been looking around online trying to find the best waterproof sneakers that are the most comfortable for your feet. And I feel like this is probably gonna be the best list that you're gonna find. Now, if I miss some sneakers that you guys would recommend that is not on this top five, please leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what pair and I'll definitely wanna check them out. Also, this top five list is in just my order, what I like consider like worst to best, I guess. All of them are excellent though, to be 100% honest. Like you couldn't go wrong with any of these choices. If you're looking for a comfortable waterproof sneaker for the fall winter time, which it's really cold out right now for me for some reason, uh, but any which way, uh, these are all gonna be excellent choices. I've tried all of them through the last couple of weeks and worn them out in the rain and out in the wet grass and so on. And I can't say enough good things about any pairs of these sneakers. So with that being said, if you guys are interested in buying any of them at any point in this video, check the link in the description of the video. It'll take you over to the respective sites uh, to be able to buy any of these shoes. And if you guys do use my links in the description, it greatly supports the channel, supports the family and everything, and helps me be able to buy some of these sneakers and helps me like do these type of comparison videos. So greatly appreciate it. That being said, we're gonna go with the number five spot. That is the Nike. Pegasus Trail 5 Gore-Tex. Like I said, this is the number five spot, but this is an amazingly good shoe as well. So the Nike Pegasus Trail 5 Gore-Tex uh, weighs in at 10.5 ounces and costs $170. I would say that the fit is true to size, but it is a little bit snug. The midsole features the Nike React X, which I do really like, and I like the Fuse upper uh, overlay parts that they have on top of the Gore-Tex. You do have a pull tab on the heel as well as a small uh, one on the tongue, and I will tell you the tongue material, very soft, I actually really like that. I also like there's extra reinforcement and fuse material uh, for the laces and underneath the laces. And even at that, this is semi-gusseted. So it means like basically it's attached from this point down. So there's no water that's gonna get through the sides of your foot. Is it waterproof? Absolutely. I used my hose test on these and just sprayed water all over them and my socks were completely dry. And 100% spoiler alert, they were dry through all five of these shoes. They've been really, really good. And the improvement from comfortable waterproof sneakers from this year in comparison to last year is insane. Like they've gotten a lot better. I'd say the stability is probably the worst out of all of the options only because this is is the most narrow version out of the rest. I wish it was a little bit wider in the heel. That's primarily my biggest gripe is the fact that it is a little bit snug fitting, but it's also very narrow. Like I wish they just, they widened out that heel quite a bit more. And even the forefoot, both of them are, are fairly narrow. Now breathability is not really something to talk about when you're talking about waterproof sneakers, even though they like say that they're breathable, like uh, like materials on some of them, there's not a lot of air that goes in and out of the shoe, at least from my experience, but what do I know? I'm just an average consumer. If you guys have a better description of like the breathable, like Gore-Tex, like leave a comment and let me know. But comparative to like regular mesh shoes, of course, those are breathable. This is like nowhere near as breathable. On the bottom, it does say it has an all-terrain compound and the traction is pretty good on these. You can see the little diamond shaped traction all over the place. I like it. I would say overall traction is probably like an eight and a half or so. Now the comfort rating, I hate to do it, but I would say that's probably like a 7.7, 7.8 out of 10. It's still a very high rating. I mean, it's it's like uh, an HD TV. I always use that analogy. Like. These are all very comfortable sneakers. They're all very, very functional sneakers. They're ones that are excellent, similar to like an HD TV. Like your eyes can only see so much. I mean, I can't even really tell that much of a difference from 1080 to 4K, but at the end of the day, this is a really comfortable pair of water resistant sneakers. I would say that the rest of them that I'm gonna be showing you are a little bit more comfortable though. That being said, some of the pros and cons. The pros, I would say it does have the highest cut collar out of all the shoes that I'm gonna be showing you, which is nice if you need that extra protection uh, for weather on the sides. Also, it does have the best water beating uh, on the upper comparison to some of the other ones. And I think that's just the way that the Gore-Tex is created on this one. I think it's the more traditional style of Gore-Tex that we're used to seeing where it's just water beads up. Some of the other ones don't have that water beading. It looks like it's going through, but it's actually not, which is pretty impressive by itself. I would say though, that if you like the water beading and stuff, it, it is kind of a nice plus because then it doesn't feel like it's wet on the top of the shoe, even though the under layer of like the Gore-Tex is water resistant. I would say that they did a really good job protecting this upper and giving you a really nice waterproof experience. As for the cons, I would say just the narrow fit of the shoe. Now, if you have a narrow foot, then this is gonna be a dream. Like sometimes shoes are too wide for you. This uh, is a, not a wide shoe, it's very narrow. And I don't personally like that with somebody that has a little bit of a wider foot. Uh, so I wish it was a little bit wider. Also, the biggest gripe that I have, and I had this problem on the fours as well. The collar is just so bunched up. I don't like this weird, loosey goosey sort of material. It feels nice. It's a nice feeling material, but I don't like that it just flip flops around and kind of gets pushed down. And I'm sure some people have gotten used to that from the previous versions. It's not something that's an irritant to people that wear them. Uh, but for me, I'm like, it's so non-traditional that I can't really get on board with like the, saying that I like it. I will say wearing these out and about, like I didn't have any issues with it. 
uh, but it is just kind of weird. Because of that, I would say that this is the hardest one to get on your feet out of all the rest that I'm gonna be showing you. Not a huge deal, but if you're a middle-aged gentleman like myself, it is a little bit difficult to get on your feet. With that, you have to just have a little bit more time and you know take the, the dedication of putting on your footwear. Uh, that being said, it's still an excellent shoe. Like They did a really solid job. And if you're a Nike purist and you need that water-resistant pair for the fall ding-dong, this is the one. I would say that it's still a really, really excellent option and very waterproof and very comfortable. Overall, again, just narrow and a little bit weird with the collar. Uh, link in the description if you're interested in buying it at 170 bucks. Now, anytime any of these sneakers do go on sale, I always try to post them over on my website, Collective Kicks, in the description. But I I also post them primarily on Twitter first and then over on Instagram and stuff if I have time. So follow me over on Twitter if you guys don't as well. It's always in the description of the video. All right, so moving on to an Adidas pair that I recently did a review on and I really like this shoe. This is the Supernova GTX, GTX obviously for Gore-Tex. Uh, and this is a, uh, a real treat for your feet as well. So this is the Supernova pair, like kind of like in the lineage of the Supernova Rise. And I've done a lot of different videos on all of those for those that are interested in my channel. But this is the Gore-Tex version of that. And the reason why I think this is a great deal is the fact that this is the cheapest option for your feet uh, with the Gore-Tex protection at $140. So that's a great price point in my opinion uh, for a nice fully waterproof Gore-Tex sneaker. Now this does feature the Dream Strike Plus in the midsole, which if you haven't tried it, I would say that overall the density of the foam feels similar to like the Adidas Bounce um, mixed with the Light Strike Pro, like both of those compounds together. Because it is pretty soft on feet, it's not the softest and squishiest. Light Strike Pro is much softer. Whatever is on the Addy Plus 3s, those are insanely soft. Uh, but this is pretty good stuff overall. Like it's not too soft, but it's enough that it gives you a nice amount of cushion and lets you know you have a comfortable pair on feet. I also like that this pair has the plushest uh, collar around the shoe and the plushest tongue. I think that those are excellent as well. I also like the reflective detailing all over the shoe uh, on the side panels and as well as on the back and stuff uh, also. This does look like a traditional pair of shoes also. Like it looks like a regular mesh pair of shoes, but it does have the Gore-Tex on it, which is insane. Like the fact that they're fully Gore-Tex at 140 bucks is a solid deal and they are very waterproof. Like I said, I did the waterproof test on them. Uh, no water got through. It is a really solid pair if you're looking for that comfortable waterproof sneaker. They do weigh in at 11 ounces and they do fit true to size in my opinion. 9.5 fit me perfectly and the width is actually pretty nice as well. I would say the stability is probably like a 7.7, 7.8. It is a little bit wider than the trail Gore-Tex joints. The traction is overall pretty good as well. I would say, you know, maybe like an 8.4 or something like that. It is continental rubber on the outsole, which is nice. And it is a little bit more beefed up than the regular Supernova Rise and stuff. Uh, so it, I like that they added a little bit more traction and they're even under the retail price of the Supernova Rise at 140 instead of 150. The overall comfort, I would give it probably an eight out of 10. Like they're really comfortable overall. The overall fit just fits my foot better than the Trail 5s do because uh, again, it's a little bit more wide foot friendly, which I do appreciate. Some of the pros and cons, it's the cheapest option at $140. I think that has a lot of value in itself. And again, if this one goes on sale, I'll post it over on uh, Twitter and whatnot and um, make sure you guys like follow along. It does have the plushest upper out of the five as well. Very nice padding along the collar and the, the tongue and the heel. The only con I would say, it does have a gusseted tongue, but it is the lowest cut gusseted tongue. So if you have lots of downpour water, it could potentially trickle down the sides uh, for the tongue and get into your socks that way because again of how low the gusseted tongue is. That being said, it is the lower cut, but it makes it easy to get on your foot. Anytime you have it like stitched on from this point uh, downwards, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, in the, the space here to get on your foot. So it is what it is. It's a give and take, but, um, but worth noting. Other than that, I don't have anything else bad to say about the shoe. It's really, really overall very nice. If you need more traction though, there's probably better options for you, but overall a very nice pair. All right, number three spot goes to a pair of New Balance for myself. You guys already know on this channel, hopefully that I'm a big fan of uh, these sneakers in general. This is the New Balance Fresh Foam X Hero V8 Gore-Tex version. It's a mouthful, but these things are excellent, man. $170 is the retail price on them, and they do fit true to size. And even better, they do offer wide feet versions, something that some of the other brands don't offer. So I love the fact that they do have that. These also do weigh in at 11 ounces, which is the same as here. The difference is you have a lot more traction on the outsole of the shoe. So if you need that rugged traction, like this has a better offering. In fact, side by side, I would say, it's better than even the, the Trail 5s. These are very waterproof, just like the others, and it does feature the Gore-Tex Invisible Fit. So uh, there is a little bit of a difference. I believe uh, this has an Invisible Fit, and then some of the other ones might have them as well. I just noticed it was called out on New Balance's website specifically. I like that you do have a lot of extra protective layers on the upper of this one as well. It says Toe Protect on the toe box. As you can see, lots and lots of material in the toe box uh, there. Very nice uh, fused 
uh, very like tough and rugged feeling. And then also you have that along the side panels and then also on the heel. Pull tab on the heel is always nice there as well. And then you do have what looks like just a regular mesh tongue, but don't be fooled by that. These are extremely waterproof as well. Uh, you do have that Fresh Foam X in the midsole making these very, very comfortable. I would say they're on par with comfort as the, the V7s, which were very comfortable as well. Like a huge step up from the V6s if you tried both of them. I will say that the Fresh Foam X in here is a little bit firmer than the Fresh Foam X in the 1080 V13s. Those have a crazy soft, squishy feel. These don't have as much of that crazy soft, squishy feel, but they're very, very soft underfoot uh, nonetheless. I just wanna make that comparison Comparison because the 1080 V13s are super soft and squishy and you wouldn't want that necessarily in a trail runner because you want some comfort there but not the crazy soft squishiness of the 1080 V13s and I think they did the right amount of a cushion inside of this one right here. It's like just an overall very, very nice pair to be able to put on and run around in which is pretty crazy that this is only the third spot on the countdown and honestly, Again, pretty much all of these are interchangeable depending on the pros and cons. Some of the things that may resonate with you or not, like the narrowness of the Trail 5 from Nike uh, versus you know the, the lower price of, of the uh, Supernovas. The traction on these are really nice. So the Viber Mouse is great. I would give these like a nine out of 10 for traction. Overall comfort rating though, I'd give like probably like an 8.8, 8.9. Very, very comfortable on feet. I highly recommend trying if you guys are interested in buying these or any of the others. Again, links in the description. So the pros and cons, starting with the pros, wide feet options are excellent. It does have the best traction out of the five, at least in my opinion. Uh, nice fused overlays and it's very easy to get on your feet. The cons, if any, is I guess it's a low cut gusseted tongue from this point down, but honestly spraying water over top of these, I didn't get any drips of water uh, through your feet, but I'm just putting it out there just in case people see the video and they're like, dude, I got through right here. Um, it could potentially happen, right? All right, number two spot for myself this year, I'm gonna go to the Hoka Clifton 9 Gore-Tex. Kind of interesting, honestly, uh, looking back, like I could definitely choose the New Balance joints over these, but I could also choose these over the New Balance joints. Like I said, all of them are pretty much excellent choices. For comfort wise though, this offers a little bit more comfort on feet than even the Heroes do, in my opinion. They did a great job on this one, to be honest. And this is the Clifton 9. Again, I'm a huge fan of the Clifton 9s in general, uh, but this is the Gore-Tex version with the invisible fit. And it actually says invisible fit on the shoe, which is a nice little change. It's nice that they actually added that in. Now these do retail at $160 and they are the lightest in the countdown, which is the reason why I was like, these, these are pretty incredible. These weigh in at 9.6 ounces, which is pretty uh, fantastic. I would say that the overall fit is true to size as well. My 9.5 fits me perfect. And they're very waterproof. They really did a nice job with this. It doesn't look like it again, when you spray it with water, it looks like it gets wet, but literally no water gets through your shoe. And they actually gusseted this one all the way up to the top. So it's very, very high gusset. And it's wide enough that it's pretty easy to slip on your feet. And because it's stitched down all the way up here, no water is gonna get through uh, through the bottom half of your shoe. So they did a great job integrating that into the shoe, but it's an insanely light and very, very comfortable option for your feet. I'd say stability overall is probably like a seven, seven or so. It's a pretty big stack of foam. Some people might find stability issues with that, but Hoka does a pretty good job making the shoes wide enough that it's not too much of an issue. Uh, you squish down left and right, you don't snap it because uh, there's like enough cushioning there that it actually kind of absorbs the roll. So I like it. I think they did a good job with that. I'll say the traction overall is okay. Like it's not anything too crazy. Uh, they do have some nice little big pods and some added uh, durability there, but overall it's like not very rugged comparison. Like obviously you get a lot more rugged features uh, with the uh, the fresh foam joints. I'd give the traction probably like an 8.4. If you've never tried the Hoka Clifton series in general, they're very comfortable. I did recently just do a video on the Sky Flows though, and the Sky Flows are actually a bit more comfortable than the, the Clifton's, I would say. But overall, man, you can't really go wrong. The Clifton's are, are super, super comfortable. Very good on feet, and now you have a waterproof element on top of it. It's just an excellent combination. And even at that for 160, a little bit of a lower price point than some of the rest. I would say overall pros and cons, starting with the pros, great value for the price as I was just mentioning. Comfort per price, I would say that this is the most comfortable pair for the price, if that's any help. And then I would say that these are very easy to get on as well. Even though it is gusseted and fixed, you do have enough wiggle room here that I can slide my feet in. No hands test even, these are good to go. I would say for the cons, it is the least rugged out of the five options. So if you need more rugged outsole, like for trail and stuff, this was probably not gonna be your favorite. And it does have a very low cut ankle. That is kind of weird as well. There's a lot of exposed ankle here. So if you need something that runs a little bit higher to prevent like water from dripping on, on the ankle and stuff, like this could be a deterrent for you, but I didn't have any issues wearing these out and about. I'm just throwing it out there for you guys' sake. Uh, overall though, very, very good choice. As with the rest of these things, it's really nice to see a lot of good competition between between uh, all these major brands. 
And with that, let's get into the number one spot. And if you guys are enjoying the video, please drop a like on the video and uh, subscribe. And if you guys wanna buy any of these options, again, please use the, the links in the description. So the number one spot for myself this year is gonna go to the On Cloud Surfer Trail Waterproof Sneaker. It's pretty crazy, honestly, and it's not one that I would have expected to be the number one spot, but it is like just slightly, just a little bit better than some of the rest, I guess. Honestly though, you can't go wrong with any of them. I can't stress that enough. All of these are really solid options. I decided to put this one at number one though because I do like the cloud surfers primarily. And if I had to like line all of these up side by side from the regular versions, if there is a respective regular, with exception of these being like a 1080 because the 1080s would be more comfortable than the cloud surfers for myself. But that being said, the cloud surfer in itself is more comfortable than the Clifton's typically. It's more comfortable than the Supernova Rises in my opinion. It's more comfortable than like the Pegasus 41s. The cloud servers are a little bit more comfortable for myself. But again, with exception of the 1080 V13s, because those ones are, are a lot more comfortable. That being said, they did a really nice job with the trail version of the cloud servers. The cloud servers usually have a really plush tongue and stuff, and they made this like kind of a fused tongue and stuff. So it's a little bit thinner, and it just looks a little sleeker because of that, and I do like that. Now, On is definitely trending nowadays, so I feel like that is helpful for these as well. The downside is this is the most expensive option out of the five, so that could be a deterrent for most. These are $180. And also they do weigh in at around 10.8 ounces. So not the lightest, the Clifton's are lighter. These are pretty nice though overall. They are very waterproof overall though, which is pretty awesome. It does say that these are waterproof, but it doesn't say that these are Gore-Tex, which is very interesting. It honestly feels pretty much exactly like Gore-Tex. They say that it's plush cushioning. It does feature a seven mm heel toe drop. Also it says it features a mission grip rubber outsole on here as well. You do have the CloudTech phase midsole for the comfort. And overall, like I was saying, it's very comfortable on feet. Stability wise, I would say it's pretty decent. Overall, it's fairly average as well. I mean, it's not wide, it's not narrow. It's probably like a 7.8. Traction, I would say is actually decent on here. It looks decent, but it is a little bit slippery. I actually slipped around in the rain uh, in here. So just throwing that out there, they're 7.7. And then the comfort overall, I would say is probably like an 8.9. Like it is really comfortable on feet. I really like the overall feel. Some of the pros and cons again, starting with the pros, they are very comfortable. They're very easy to get on. Uh, they are very waterproof and it does have a very high cut gusseted tongue as well, which is nice. And you actually have an extra high tongue, which some might like, some might not. The cons, they are the most expensive at $180 and they have the slipperiest outsole out of the group, at least from my testing and my experience. But overall, it's a very, very comfortable pair and definitely one for the countdown. If you guys want to see detailed reviews on each one of these sneakers, I've reviewed a couple of them and posted them on my channel already. The rest of them I'm working on, so check back and subscribe and hopefully you'll find those videos when they pop up. Anyways, leave a comment in the comment section. What do you guys think about my my list. Uh, what did I miss? Is there another pair that's on the market that's really good from the waterproof comfort perspective? And if you guys want to buy any of the shoes that I mentioned in this video, again, link in the description. Appreciate y'all for stopping by and watching though. Hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more content uh, very soon. All right, peace guys.